All right, as you can see, I've got some parts cast. This is the this is what this is supposed to look like. Uh, just a rough a rough drawing of it, but this is a base, 15 inches wide. Well, actually, it's about 14 and a half inches wide by three inches tall. I wanted it to be relatively heavy. I don't want this thing to tip over. I want it to have a little bit of mass. There'll be a metal a metal floor underneath it, and there may be legs on it. There may not be. But anyway. 14 and a half inches diameter, three inches high. The liner is 10 inches tall. It has a five and a half inch, actually it's five and five eighths diameter opening. And there is a cut, I'll call it a cut. This area is opened up and that's where the burner will go in and we'll build the burner too. So. This is the chimney, or the vent, or an access point. It will sit in the cap, up on top, right there. It will sit in the cap, and it will allow the excess heat to escape that way. The burner will work properly. But it will also contain it relatively well and give, give me a place to clean the, the, um, the dross off of the aluminum. And these pieces will allow me to adjust the height of the crucible inside of this, this container. So my crucible may not end up being exactly that. It may, you know, we'll see as, as, as this project goes along, we'll see what it, how it works and how it's gonna end up. I'll stick this piece to this piece with this stuff. This is refractory cement, refract, refractory cement, Rutland, refractory cement. It's pretty good stuff. I have another foundry I use this in. It really, it really lasts well. This stuff casts really well. It really did. I know word about this. I mixed this up. And this is Inselcast 28. So you can see that. If you can't see that, it's prior Giggy Inselcast 28. It mixed up really, really well. I mixed it up in a big square plastic container. I used my hands and just mixed it. I had rubber gloves on. Uh, made all my, had my molds ready and just pushed it into the molds and packed it down and let it sit for two days. Then I uh, dried it out in my oven upstairs. For the base. Piece of black four mica. Rolled up into that shape. I used little wood blocks, screwed them down just to hold this in place and taped it down really. You can see this tape on the inside. Pretty simple. This is simple. Made the base. This casts that cylinder, that inner cylinder. This is the inside piece that I used. This piece, this piece fits into here, and this is just set up so it's collapsible. It's set, set in the center. When the casting was done, I took the screws out, top and bottom, collapse this and took it out that way to break the casting. The outside piece of the casting, and these little blocks held the outside piece in roughly the shape of a circle, is a piece of formica. I rolled it up to the proper dimensions, tied it with the wire, made some copper clips, little copper clip that allows you, allows me, you make this and do this it will allow you to also just to hold that for these parts for this part butter dish spray can pretty simple um, yogurt container yogurt container and there you go this stuff was amazing to work with it, it it, it um, mixed really well, it packed really well, and I'm really, really pleased with it. It was, it's just really nice stuff. 
Um, we'll see how it lasts. Let's take a tour. I'm going to talk really quietly because this microphone is really close to me now. Those numbers are the ID numbers for the Inswool. As you can see, inch thick, have a lot. I'll wrap that thing with it. I'll cover it with this stuff. This is an HVAC duct. I may need more, I may not. And then eBay purchase regulator hose. This ugly piece of metal will become a burner. This will be the, call it the injection tube. I'll put a cap on the end and I'll drill a tiny hole in it mounted on the end and drill some holes down the length of the tube. Uh, okay. All right. All right. So there you have it. This is what I'm going to build. If you follow along with this, you can build one of these too. As you can see, I used a nice big chunk of metal as a mandrel and 
this little hammer just to bend all this around. That looks pretty good. This interior green line is the outline of the base, the um, refractory cement. And then this is the top piece. And we have them indexed like so. Um, and this is a top piece. So what I'm thinking is I'll go around these bit edges one more time. I'll go around these just to make sure that they're straight and relatively circular. And then I'll come along the outside and I'll weld all these little cuts. And that will make this thing shed water quite a bit better. And when this is installed, when I put it together, the sheet metal sides will tuck underneath this lid, but go over the top of this. This is the bottom. So the, the idea is that it will shed water. Anyway, so there's the plan. That's, what, that's what's up. basically have the bottom of a, a frame here. It's pretty stout. We can put legs on it or whatever. So I'm happy with that. So that's the bottom. That's the top of the base. You know, just junk metal. The worst thing about this metal was its rust. It made cutting it with a plasma cutter bad. It made welding it bad. It just it's nasty, but it's it was used anyway. I'm happy about that. The plant, of course, is back to here. Here. So that's pretty nice. Set around here. We've got a pretty nice base. All right. So for the last couple minutes, I forgot to turn the camera on. Anyway, as you can see, I've got the base setting here. I have a setting on this on the metal base. Um, I don't know why. I just like it sitting on this insulated layer. So there it is. I put a little bit of this Rutland refractory cement on here. Probably about a sixteenth of an inch, not too much. I'm also going to and am putting some on the bottom of this liner. Now you know, there's a lot of area here. I've marked from the outside of this liner, three inches around here. If I wanted to make this liner, let's say make it an inch bigger, all the way around here, I could still put two inches, yeah, that'd be right, I could put two inches of, um, of ceramic wool keeping the same diameter and have more than twice, probably, this, I'm looking at a capacity of, of 100 cubic inches. Um, I think you, 
that could double their or double and a quarter that capacity, like 225 cubic inches, just by increasing the liner diameter. So if you're following along with this and using this or, or using some of my design, a bigger liner might give you a lot bigger foundry. I don't need more than 10 pounds that I can think, or that at this point in time not that I know of, um, for the project that I'm making this for. However, that's 10 pounds of aluminum, which translates into like 30 pounds of brass. But if I decide that in the future I do need more, well, I, I, um, I can take this apart the way it's built. It's just going to be screwed and bolted together. There'll be, there'll be um, sheet metal screws that hold the sheet metal on the sides. We'll just, I'll just do a hole through here. So I'll be able to pull this apart, probably be able to pry this off of this piece pretty easily and make it just set a bigger line right here. Same height, 10 inches, and have, have a foundry that's capable of twice the, the capacity. So anyway, just saying. So this is what we've got so far. This piece. Like so, as you can see, I hope it's glued together mortared together with that Rutland cement. sheet metal for this and fit it. I don't know if you noticed, but but I've bent this and welded this. I also turned it over and I just carefully hammered this edge down just to give it a little curve. So this is up a little higher. The idea is that if it's that it probably doesn't make any difference, but it's just a little bit Oh, curved like so. I'm thinking it might be better than to have a curve like a bowl, just in case water gets onto this edge. It will have less of a chance of, you know, going on in. Anyway, I did that. You may want to consider doing that with yours. If you're building one of these. All right. Cut some metal.
All right. So, got the sheet metal taken care of, put together, fixed, installed, adjusted, aligned. You can see this is what we have. So, Next step is to fill this thing full of um, insulation. So let's do it. So, I twisted the insulation in here and had to drill a hole, so there's a pocket that isn't insulated in there. Probably not a big deal. Uh, looks pretty good this way. I think it's going to be pretty decent. That's a lot of insulation. Well, the refractory really isn't insulation, but that's a lot of insulation. So, cool. What I propose, and we'll see if it's going to work, is that I make I make a little ring, and it doesn't have to be pretty. Not going to be as pretty as my drawing, and my drawing's not great. But I make a little metal band, like so. I've got it in 3D here. That this thing will just fit into, but maybe push that wool through this and up and over. Then I use this piece, and I just fit this piece down in here against the wall, shoving the wall up against the metal and this is what I end up with is a piece here that then locks the wall in place which is what needs to be done and also holds this thing from falling down into the fire now if that isn't clear I don't know what the hell is so you know what can I say anyway that's my plan and let's see how this is going to go
All right, so what I like about it is that it holds that piece of refractory, keeping in mind that this is the wool blanket, right? The wool blanket will come in here. Just move it over a little bit. So the wool blanket will be up in here, and then the wool blanket will open or be exposed to the heat. Like so, you can see, maybe you can see. So the wool blanket will be down in this area, and then it will wrap all the way up around it in here and hold this piece in place. And then the rest of it's ins wool and some sort of structure around here to make this, this donut relatively sturdy. It doesn't have to be hugely sturdy, but if it's going to be picked up and swung, I'd like to have a hinge somewhere here. So I can pick it up and swing it. I've seen that on the internet. That's not my design, uh, but it looks like a good design. It needs to be somewhat structural. Anyway, okay. So, rounds down a little bit, you can see, it's not pretty, but it doesn't really have to be, it just needs to be strong, and that should be pretty strong, strong enough to pick that lid up. straighten that to make my bend prettier however that's pretty good that'll be a this will be the attachment point that this will will shift rotate on and it's obviously going to go well it doesn't matter actually it could go that way and cover the burner if that'd be a good idea I don't know but, anyway, so a nice way to put structure on here, and also if you look at it, not that it matters, but it might, it's a bit insulated from the heat also, because air can flow through here. Here is what we have. This metal ring, which I know looks like crap, but it'll work just fine, held up by three legs. These legs are welded back somewhat away from the heat. The idea is to try to keep, to keep this from getting too hot. I should be able to weld the bottom of these, put screws in the top of these, and hold my top piece on just by putting screws in it. So we're going to try that. Another awesome drawing. Um, yeah, okay.
Good stuff. Thick. So, basically, some edges. This will be the hinge point, and then these will just be the rest of it. Keeping the frame away from the heat is the idea.
So, this is what we got. It's quite sturdy. And the idea was to keep the metal as far away from the heat as possible. Let me demonstrate. And it does come off, which is nice. We have these three pieces. We have this piece. This is where the heat's going to hit. Next step is to cover the edges of this with just some basic basic sheet metal. Sheet metal. Anyway, so come with me. What I'd like to do is do some sort of let me get this all up, do some sort of mount on here to hold that burner. More likely, more likely than not, take a couple bolts out, something that just holds that burner in place. I've got a good collection of junk here. Remains that that piece this is some rusty crap so if you're lucky enough to find a piece of rusty 060 steel like this I mean it's useful it's it's just hard to hard to work with it's coated with rust pretty badly if you have a nice piece of it well you're going to be a lot better off So the idea is that I put a little bump on the burner, slide it in, and then turn it to the right. That locks it in place. And I'll probably put another screw or two into the sheet metal. Still it's mild steel. Pulling it down quicker than hers.
I'm, get, I'm getting too complicated. I'm getting artsy, so I'm going to stop there. Um, with that. Anyway, so that's what we're going to do. Now, a lot of people on the internet have different different plans for these things, but there are, are several of them that are built this way. What I found is that that apparently most people that build these live at low elevations, and I don't. I live in a town at 6,200 feet in elevation, Craig, Colorado, just in case you, you're interested. And... I started with a tube, this little galvanized tube, with a 57, a number 57 hole, which I believe is about uh, 043 um, thousandths, and it ran really, really badly. It was, was um, lethargic. It was just way too rich, and I have a feeling it probably has to do with the altitude. So I dropped this down to a number 64. Um, to a number 64, which is about 35 or 035, and this works a lot better. I did a couple things here that I should point out. Let's try this. Just this this um, nice metal grinding tool, tapered, and I ground in like so on both sides. This galvanized pipe wasn't on here at the time, but I, I came at it at an angle, and you can see. That I ground a little bit away here, but I also ground really and paid more attention to the inside edge of the front side in a way, I guess, to, to, to make it a little bit cleaner of an airfoil. Maybe I did, maybe I didn't. I also used this tool and I just did a real little taper just right here. Probably won't, probably doesn't do anything for it. There's probably a formula for for the length of the taper, and this taper may be, you know, an eighth of an inch of a taper. It's not much at all. Um, I don't know. It, it won't hurt anything, and it, and it works properly without a flare inside of the in, inside of the the um, the furnace. I do have a flare I made just for the heck of it, so I can test this on device. I don't need this flare when the burner is installed in the furnace, but if I do want to use it. I can just plug that in. I don't know. Maybe I'll melt snow with it. Anyway, let's test this thing. So that's pretty good. All right. Locked in place so the pressure doesn't blow it out the back. Or whatever. Anyway, so in here, what I find is turning it on. Turn it on, you hear it. Flame is in a tube, but I blow that flame out, and look at that. So now, look at that. That's nice. That's going to work. And regulator full on so that's going to heat metal up pretty fast 
and it's kind of a cool view. I hope I can get this lined up correctly. You can see the fire right through the burner tube. Anyway, that's all we need of that. Looks like now it's like four inches and change. I'll be done. Well, that's good. I did hit that right, right? Yeah, four inches, four inches. Okay, so that's the piece I want to use for the bottom. That's the piece that I want to use. And it is This is also four inches edge to edge. I cleaned this up really good. The idea is to keep any crap out of it. So, so that's what I've got. It's time to weld this thing.
a lot of metal here. If I really wanted to, I could fill that in. I may come in and get little spots like that yet. But there's a lot of metal here. Remember where it started. Just for comparison, my little foundry furnace takes this, this crucible, which has been repaired once. I believe I've probably poured, done about 40 or 50 um, castings with this really, really basic, but you know, not a bad little, not a bad little um, crucible. There's probably a bug in there. I'll take it outside pretty shortly before that bug wakes up and infests my garage. So it's going to take a better system as far as picking the thing up and dumping it. So this one is about 10 pounds compared to about 3 pounds. This is going to take a lot more work to, to, to dump to be able to um, empty this properly. So, so that's where we're at. Good. Awesome. Happy.
this is looking pretty good. I like this. This area that I said I was going to adjust or was going to trim these bevels. If you notice, I've trimmed the bevels a little bit. That allows this to fit tightly, fit tightly into this frame. That fits nice and tight like that and holds it in place pretty good. But additionally, it, it fits like a so and locks in. That's it's pretty good. I'm, I'm, I'm okay with it. What I'm thinking about doing is making a couple parts that pivot here that angle over, lock this in place at 90, then I can pick it up and the, the um, crucible can't get away and it can't swing wildly other than in, in this direction. So that's the next step. A little bit tight there. Paper shims, eight thousandths.
I really don't want to be reaching my hands down around in here. And I certainly don't want to have a bolt up here. So having this to tighten this, to lock this in place once it's hooked up, I think is a great deal. So let's lock like so. Now if I want to pick it up, I pick it up. Locked in place. Next thing that needs to be done is there needs to be a way to allow this thing to tip it. I've, I had some, I've had several different ideas about that, but what I'm thinking is going to work the best is that if I put a little, well, a little piece of metal here. Hope you can see that. I will a little piece of metal here, so this can't push forward. And then do the same thing there, so this can't push forward. It should then allow me to lever this thing and tip it over. And I think that the mounting is sturdy enough to handle it. If I have any questions about it once it's done, there's there's other things. There are other things I can do. They're more gadgety, but that's the plan. So let's try that. I've set it up like this so I can show you what I did. If you're doing this, you'll see you'll see what, what I'm up to. You can see that this piece and this piece, they're both parallel. I want to make the pour go pretty pretty smoothly. Well, that's stupid to say. Of course I want the pour to go smoothly. I want it to be accurate. I don't want to have to build a giant, a giant I don't have to build a, a giant funnel to, to um, you know, to catch this aluminum. And so what I did is if you look down this pipe, I don't know if I can line this up, I'll certainly try. But if you can look down this pipe, you'll see the lip of that crucible sort of in the center. That's where it should actually be. I'll put a little lip here, more, more than likely, just a little one, so that it, it's not a sloppy pour and it doesn't dribble everywhere. I don't know if, if molten metal does that. It, it didn't do that on my other crucible. Anyway, that's what I did. This, by the way, is about, let me get a measurement here. Looks like 47 and 5 eighths. This is 7 inches, and then this is, I think, another inch. Um, and this is made just to clear this area, so that way uh, I'm clearing this. I may have to trim a little bit of this off, but I don't think so.
Alrighty. All right. I think that the carrier piece is mostly done. The only thing that bugs me about it, well, it's gadgety, but it has to be. Do this one person, it has to be. Um, notice where I've ground this. I put a little piece that, just a little piece of eighth inch that sat right there and held this in position, which is where it needs to be, really. It needs to be here, so when you pour it, that lip isn't moving around. And the thing that bugs me about this is, is you drop this down, you notice the whole crucible drops down and it drops in. So I'm, I'm not sure about it. I'll think about it. I do like this. I, I can take this off. I don't know what kind you're going to use if you're building one of these things. This is drill pipe, a little piece of drill pipe that my dad actually had. And I'm still, I'm still cutting pieces of this thing and still making cool stuff out of it. So if you're watching this, Dad, <laughs> thank you. I have been, like a lot of people, casting in a muffin pan. When I have extra aluminum, I just throw it in a muffin pan. So I have five-gallon buckets hidden around here full of aluminum. Well, not full of aluminum, but with several little ingots. But I'd like to try something different because I'm interested in, in um, I guess you would call it a low-pressure permanent mold type casting. And I'm thinking I want to turn this into a mold. And rather than cast... Rather than cast um, a bunch of muffin shapes, cast a cylinder shape. Then I, I have something that, you know, I could potentially build something out of it. Keeping in mind that there's probably going to be dross and, and different things in this aluminum. Anyway, um, I don't know. We'll just I'll just have to find out. And this is what I want to cast in. And to do permanent mold casting, uh, apparently they heat these up. They heat their molds up to uh, whatever, I don't know, uh, they're hot. So that's something that I consider doing, but I like to just pour it cold to see what happens. Will it break it? Will it stick to it? Will it, will it, just, will it not fill the interior very well? Well, I really don't care because this is just, um, I guess this is just extra. I would, I would have this form set up to pour any extra into, into this form or a form like this for you know, for storage purposes, I suppose, rather than having a bunch of those biscuits around. Anyway, it's interesting thought to me, and I've set this up so I can attempt to do a relatively clean cut. So I have a piece of, of um, plywood with a slot cut in it that matches this slot, and I've set this up. I've just clamped this piece down, but raised it up so it touches this You'll notice that I have that little that little nub is lined up underneath my cutter. I'd like to get rid of that nub. So the plan is is to start this, make the cut down to somewhere in here, turn it over, line it up, and then make the other cut. So I have two halves to work with, and I'll cut it off here with either my chop saw or my metal cutting saw, and have a two-piece mold that hopefully won't be too horrendously difficult to clean up and make pretty. Anyway, this works like so. I'll just slide this down. Seems to work pretty good in theory. <laughs> you know, theory and practice, well, we'll give it a shot. So that's where I'm at. That's where we're at. That's what I want to do. And we're getting real close to melting some aluminum and trying this, which is good because I think this video is run on, run on over an hour. Um, of course, I don't know. It's just fun. Anyway, all right, let's get this thing going. Camera stand. Camera stand. By the way, if you, if you um, go to my website, I'll set a blog up on my website. I build these things. And that's where, what, what you'll see on my website are these gadgets. Uh, I build them here. If you want to buy one, great. If you don't, great. I don't care. Well, I guess I do care. If you want to buy one, yeah, please buy one. But it's not a huge deal if you don't. It's just the website set up. That's where I'll put the blog. It seems to make sense. All righty.
so it was a little a little sticky in here which transferred over to that directly as it always does but I think with my grinder I can touch these spots up carefully with a 132nd wheel and clean this up pretty decently. Oh that sucks. That one's not good. Still, overall it's better than by hand and I think it'll work just fine. Alrighty, a couple things. I finished cutting this and I ground this. Cutting it on that assembly weld where you've got that little nub in there is a really good thing to do. I missed some of it and had to go back and it took a long time to grind it. Well, not a long time, but it took some time. As you can see right there, I missed it. But, how nice is that? So, have basically, I think it's just 42 inches. So, it's roughly three cubic inches and uh, three cubic inches per linear inch. Little bits and pieces here. Have an idea. I'm going to try. I cut these pieces out. I spent like 10 minutes cutting these pieces out. None of them are measured accurately, but I really don't care. Uh, the idea is that the two halves of that of that um, mold are like so. They need to be clamped together. So my thinking is, I have this larger pipe. In fact, the pipe that I built the old crucible with, it's a three inch pipe or so. Just drill a hole in it and put a bolt in it and I've got a nice clamp that self-centers. Well, that's the, the idea. But I have six of these, so I think I can do a clamp pretty inexpensively. And not only that, pretty serious. I'll probably just use quarter 20 to start with, but I might go to a larger bolt down the road. We'll see. It's an experiment anyway. But I do like the idea. I'll be much happier being able to cast cylinders, especially if I can clean the draw, if I can clean the aluminum up well and watch my temperature as I'm pouring, you know, make a relatively decent quality piece of metal. That would be nice. Maybe I can't. Maybe that's a dream. I also decided that I want to build a piece and I want to try this. I want to make a, an attachment here that locks us in place. I'm just going to build a piece that I can screw in. If I don't like it, then I'll take it out. So, you know, that's pretty, pretty basic. Made it back in the hardware store. So the form looks pretty good. I need to put these little ears on it to index it to hold it together. I need to put a bottom on it also. I haven't figured that one out. I need to drill holes in these, quarter 20. These are the clamps for this that will hold it together. These will be the bolts that will hold it together. Then it'll actually be just hand tightened if, if this goes well. So it'll be like a T-handle. So those need welded. This one's awfully thin. I may have to weld or put something on it. Maybe weld it not on it. If it messes up.
The little part is now complete. There's nuts for axles and in that 3 16 rod, which welded in, welded in. Then just another little piece, which I picked up, picked up off my junk table. I welded this piece on first. Then I set this piece just right underneath it and welded it on second. So this piece is aligned with that piece. See my little index parts of one of them welded on the bottom, one welded on the top piece. Everywhere I've done that, that way these are, are inner, they interconnect or they, they key or index or whatever. I'll probably tap these down if I haven't already. And I just my vice hammer to make these tight. But that holds this alignment pretty decently. I welded a couple pieces of one eighth strap or three millimeter strap, whatever that is, on the bottom, and you can see that I offset it just a little bit. This will be set will be set at somewhat of an angle to be filled and I'll have to build some sort of funnel or some sort of some sort of um, entry device for this thing. I didn't have a piece of all thread long enough and didn't really want to use a piece of all thread. But I did have a bolt, a couple bolts actually. So this bolt was a little big for the interior of this one inch hole, or this one inch pipe, which is a three quarter inch hole. I ground down the bolt just a little bit so it fits in. The bolt's actually, the head is back in here somewhere, sitting snug. And then I welded just all around here so it's actually levered in there I mean there's it's, it's, there's some leverage to it it's really stout ground the edge down and then welded this piece of I believe that's um, like 3 8 or maybe 7 16 rod to this you know to cut the head off of another bolt welded this on so that and I can slide this piece of drill pipe on to put it on and take it off because I want to be able to I want to be able to hook this thing up without having this drill pipe piece on here. This is pretty heavy, it's probably eight pounds, maybe seven. I don't know, it balances out the thing well. It's heavy holding it up with one hand, the whole unit, while trying to attach. Trying to attach to that might be tough. So it's an option. I can attach that, lean this over, put this counterweight on, and then move it. So the one person, it's going to be, I think, real, I think it will work really smoothly and it might be better, might be actually safer, and it might be a better pour just with one person rather than having two people pour because it's, it's a big deal. Pouring is a big deal. See all this junk on the table? That was what was stuck inside of this pipe. So you can see I've cleaned it up quite a bit. I want to use some boron nitride, but I don't have any handy in this expensive stuff, and I can't find it in my little town of Craig, Colorado. So I'm going to order some boron nitride. I think that, that it's used as a, a permanent mold coating. I'm wondering if a little boron nitride wouldn't be a good thing to put inside the crucible, maybe even outside of it. It's a real, it's a mold release agent that I believe if you can keep it, if you can keep it applied to the piece, it keeps aluminum from, from damaging the steel.
All right, was busy doing some final stuff. So one last little tour here before we get ready to pour. Oh, here's the here's a lip. It looks pretty good. Let's see if we can get a good. Let's see how it works. Just wanted something there. You know, I did say this was thin, and it was awfully thin. As you can see, I attacked a bunch of welds down into here to thicken it up. And a lot of this metal on top is the welds from the bottom. So, oh well, sometimes that happens. Looks pretty nice, though. I like it. Good. Good lip. Considering how much time it took to build. All right, over here, I did have to weld another nut onto this thin piece of this pipe, but so that's done. Notice that there's a nut welded down here too. That nut is just, it, it's, it's just a hole to catch this because this is now a mount. I don't want this to get away. So you can see I've built the basic little A-frame. So there's a the frame, nice, simple. And then the little funnel piece, which I just grabbed some more of this ju that junkie still over on the table and bent it into somewhat of a funnel shape. And then, I don't know, I, I ended up with that. I welded a piece down here. Just bent these pieces up and hopefully it's the right height and the right angle and all that stuff. What I like to do with this is to turn it into, well, I guess a dross filter, you know, to catch slag and to catch junk. So I'm not probably not going to do that this time around, but yeah, it, you know, I'll just see if it's going to work. Period. So anyway, that's that's that. The mold's clean, ready to go. The only other thing that needs to happen here before we pour, I say we. <laughs> uh, if you've been watching this. Yeah, 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 we works. So, I'm thinking, I have this piece of stainless. Make take a little corner out of that. But I'm thinking this piece being stainless would be a good fit because it won't dissolve like these pieces. So if I weld these pieces up higher, just regular steel, they should be less susceptible to the damage that aluminum causes. And aluminum will eat this stuff up. It definitely does. Some more of that boron nitride might be an interesting use for everything that you put in the aluminum. And that boron nitride might work for other things. Anyway, okay. Let's go. Might grind it some, but we'll see. 
Pitch in here. Just spin it around. Bring it back up. And work my way around. Just shake off my way around. But I don't know. It's a spoon. Looks like I'm about ready to test this. Have this set up. Crucible setting and container or setting in the heater. The furnace the heater connected, looking good. Have a counterweight, LT handle setting there. This is for the edge of this handle, and I have all this set up. Just up, oh, so I'm gonna fire this up and start melting aluminum. Alrighty. Yep. So we got to start it up. Smoking a little bit. just a little bit. Clean the dross off of this. Be careful. Get a Maybe I'll turn the heat back up. a try okay so what I need to do unclamp this and this over here wish I could see what that was seeing well, then put this open I have a this is a whole freaking procedure to do this. It's quite a quite a deal because yeah, it's ten pounds of molten aluminum. You really don't want it to in a way. So, I have a safety that I put on here.
Then I have this. This is a counterweight. So I can carry this pretty decently. All right, it's ready to move. So I'll move it over and then have you set the camera back on that stand. As you can see, this is some hot stuff. But as long as I, one thing I did that was probably not such a good idea is put my So that locks that in the shape I needed. Alrighty. So let's pour this. You may watch yourself. I don't know what's gonna happen here. Oops, oops. I don't like doing that. Stopping was a terrible thing to do. You should never stop doing a pour. But I didn't All think about it. that stuff cools off fast. It does. That's basically it. That's it. Well, you know, for the first time, nobody died. I thought that could pro potentially crack. Because it's going from, what is it, 20 degrees out here, maybe? Immediate max. To, to something more substantial. I don't know what the hell is in there, but there's some weird looking device. device in there. Yeah, we'll dig it out later. Anyway, look at that. The form works pretty good. It should be, well, you can see it filled up to here. Yep. This viewing audience needs to see this. Because that kicks ass. It's nice. Let's see here. I know it'll come out of here. It's just probably really lightly. Um, held in place. Well, as soon as you don't just lay it down in the snow. I was just thinking that, yeah. Because as soon as it cools, it's going to shrink a bit. Yeah, that'll, yeah, and it will shrink a lot more than the, the steel around it. Yeah, I can feel it. There it goes. Look at that. That is nice. You can see there'll be a line where the two pores went, and then this won't be a good piece to do anything with, really, as far as using that as the piece. Yeah, yeah probably not. I'll cut it and look at it. But still, that's really impressive. That is really, really nice. No, it's no pretty good too. Oh, yeah. Really good smell out there. So, to hell with an ingot when you can do that have a really nice piece of metal to cast. About 278 high, so that's over, I don't know, four or five hundred degrees, whatever this high threshold load this is. Anyway, if you look at the interior, looks really good. This, this mortar cement bubbled up and, and chipped off a little bit, but I don't care too much about that. The outside is warm, probably 80 or 90 degrees. Really, really nice. Ugly, ugly thing, but <laughs> built to heat metal, not built to be beautiful. And it works really well. This sat here, notice that the snow hasn't melted much. <laughs> so that's interesting. It melted more a little bit by the burner, I'm not sure why. But considering that it was 1300 degrees for for a half an hour, I don't know, 20 minutes, pretty good. Uh, 
that furnace is going to end up living living outside probably right here the stands all look pretty good worked really well so I'm happy about that I'm very happy I'm really happy that I was able to cast a piece of metal that that I'm going to be able to use although you know watching the pour I did stop in the middle of the pour big no-no I may decide to cut it up and cast it again, but probably not. I don't know. We'll see. Or I'll just, may just do something else with it. Looking at it, I just cut this. Look how nice that is. That is super sweet. Super sweet, if that's the word. You can see it's a bit oblong shaped, which makes sense. But the surface is good. This is where I stopped my pour. That little default or defect in it but how nice that is that could make so many things even if it was a relatively poor casting it could make a lot of different things and it's not a bunch of muffins in the in a you know in a in a five gallon bucket that are hard to get to so I'm pretty happy with it then you notice you can see the um, flash on either side is non-existent and this is the two pores so that's that's just that's what happens when you when you pour improperly which i did you know i didn't expect it the metal was going in a direction i didn't expect it to go into so i stopped and then poured it and that caused that line and, and it probably means that this piece is not something that i would want to turn into a um, drive shaft or anything however i'm still incredibly happy because now i can store this this is so much nicer and with a good casting it, it was a relatively decent casting you know just one port that would have worked really well you can see these work good nice and clean inside they didn't break they didn't shatter they just worked really well these forms are incredible they are so much better than my old sand casting forms which are are all up here all my sand casting forms and some of my castings which by the way here's one of my castings from my earlier forge that's a pretty nice actually it's a two-piece casting isn't that nice yes that's nice thank you i still think boron nitride is interesting and we'll probably use it all these work really good the counterweight excellent what else do we have here oh yeah the shrinkage on that the shrinkage on this this piece I, I wanted to show you you can see where it shrunk down there I like that I wondered how it was going to shrink where you just never know so it's nice that it shrinks from the top down <coughs> or at least you know this substantial amount of shrinkage that's a great thing and in this piece worked out decently uh, the same stainless looks like I can peel that aluminum off if I want to and I did use this as a measuring stick this is about eight inches high of aluminum and that's how I knew that the um, crucible is full so handy what else have we got here crucible looks pretty good there is a uh, it looks like a piece of a, the jaws of a monkey wrench or something down there anyway it looked like it did pretty good I'll watch it I really think it's gonna work fine and you know with the addition of this boron nitride I really I don't see a, an issue in having a crucible a steel crucible that will last a long long time for aluminum potentially copper and potentially brass but you know maybe not copper maybe not brass but definitely aluminum I know I've I've done this before I have had experience with steel crucibles and they work pretty good so I'm really impressed with it. Anyway, to recap, I guess to finish recap, I'm liking all the parts. They worked pretty much how they should. I could have done a better job pouring, but I'm still incredibly happy with how it all turned out. This worked really good. It locked in place well. It got warm, but it didn't get too hot, as you can see. It looks pretty good. You see about the last two inches of it. I've shown some discoloration that paint layer has been cooked off of it but I think we're in pretty good shape 
So, I believe that with that, guys, that's it. So, I'll be building more stuff. If you want to check back or subscribe, I guess that's the term you use, go ahead and do it. Anyway, I hope you build one. hope it works out great for you, and I hope you get rid of those nasty little biscuits and start casting, you know, cool stuff. Cool junk. Cool junk. <laughs> Cast whatever you want. Anyway, I'm good. I'm gone. Bye.